Hollywood is 110 years old. And that's a lot of movies. But if it's been around for so long, it's because we all love the movies. But why do we love them so much? Well, I think that it's because it creates real emotions within us. But even though these emotions are real, what about what we are watching? Is it real? Of course it's not, it's a movie. But could you easily tell the difference between virtual effects and real footage? Could you? This curtain behind me, for example, is this real? Or well, surprise, it wasn't. This is what we call virtual production. It's a combination of real footage and computer graphics in real time. And it changes things. It changes things because years ago, it would have taken hours and hours to render one single frame of this environment. But today, it's nearly instantaneous on a consumer-grade computer. Now, let's imagine that you want to become a filmmaker. So, you write your script, you're happy about it, and that's it, right? You're ready to go. But wait, it's not that simple. You have to go through the Hollywood workflow. First, you go to pre-production, where you will plan everything. And then production itself, we're going to start filming the movie. And finally, post-production, when you add some effects afterwards. So it's going to take you a lot of time, a lot of efforts, and it will be very expensive. But don't worry, because now I will show you how we can make things much easier with this technology. Let's change the time of the day. So, first, if you want to do a good movie, you need a good set. And you will have a team that will do what we call scouting. So you will go from locations to locations until you find a good one. But to go to all these locations, you have to travel, obviously. And once they found a good one, it's not done yet, because you have to work with a set designer. And the set designer will make it look good before the actors come in. So it's a lot of time, a lot of travel, a lot of efforts. But now let's imagine. Imagine that we could do all that here with the same people, the same creative people, but all in the same room. So you don't need to travel anymore. You don't lose time because you can do everything at the same time. And also, it reduces drastically your cost, obviously, because you don't have to pay, you don't have to pay for tickets, like train tickets, plane tickets. You don't have to pay for hotels, permits, etc. So now you get your set. But the story is key as well. So your script is key. And you have to prepare it very well, because it will get you through the whole production. But what if we were able to change things last minute? We did it already, but can we change the weather? Looks a bit, looks familiar, no? It looks a bit more like London, doesn't it? So, as you can see, we could change things last minute. And it changed everything, because if you have a new idea that comes in in the creative process, and the actors are here already, you can change things with them. So, with the graphic cards and the processors being more and more powerful, this kind of technology was already rising. But when COVID hit, we were not ready for it. And neither was the cinema industry. That's why the urge to innovate propelled its te this technology so much that now it's available to anyone who is willing to create from huge production to independent filmmaker. But how does that work? Why is the magic behind it? Well, this is called camera tracking. At Moses Engineering, we created a technology called Star Tracker. Actually, as you can see, they are mounted on these three cameras right here. And 
How does that work? Well, the star tracker look at a random constellation of retroreflective stickers that we call stars. It continuously look at these stars, hence we know exactly where each cameras are in the set. This is in fact an infrared camera that will look at these stars and then since we know where they are, we can play with the virtual background. So what about this virtual background? Well, it's created in a computer, in a game engine. And when the camera moves, the Star Tracker tells the game engine to adapt its perspective to create this realistic illusion. And this technology is already available for any cameras and any lenses. But even though we are creating very advanced technology, we try to create it in a way that the filmmakers and the crew won't have to think about it while they are working. We want them to be able to do what they are the best at in their job already, but within this virtual space. So, how do we match the real world and the virtual world? Well, there's different technologies for that. You could, for example, use what we call an LED wall. So it's basically a giant screen that's in front of the actors and it will show this world, but also reflect it on the actors while they're here on set. Or you could use a green screen and you have a real-time feedback on set of this virtual world behind the actors. Behind the actors or behind a TED Talk speaker, for example. In fact, it's the technology that we are using here today. It's a three by six meter green screen that was behind me the whole time. And you had the illusion that I was in a huge space, right? But it's much more portable now because this technology could take it anywhere. And before you had to create large expensive sets. But I think you start to get the idea. It makes the production cost effective. It makes it much easier to plan. But also as we saw, it makes it much easier to change last minute if new ideas come in. But it's not only about costs, because when you are not traveling, you are also reducing your carbon footprint. And it's very important because nowadays, film production, but also broadcast production, are very concerned about their carbon footprint. And in fact, there was a study by the BBC that shows that one hour of broadcast is equivalent to 8.2 tons of carbon dioxide. And that's a lot, that's crazy. So we had to innovate here as well. In fact, one of the cameras that was following me the whole time is on one of our robotic heads just here. And these cameras are sitting on the robotic heads and this technology has been in many movies over the last 20 years. Movies like Gravity or more recently, Squid Game. But now we want to enable any camera operator to control it remotely from anywhere in the world with no delay felt at all. So we can start to imagine different workflows. Imagine that a camera operator is for example in Paris and in the morning you will film a football match happening in London. In the afternoon, you could film another football match happening now in the US. All that without traveling is doing everything from home. So, again, it reduces its costs, but also its carbon footprint. But also it gets a higher productivity because now it can do two jobs in the same day with no jet lag. Well, this kind of technology and this workflow, we are already providing them to broadcasters. I think that this new workflow that I showed you today will change our storytelling. I think that they will change the way creative people and talents interact and evolve on set. But I also think that it will 
reduce our travel. And it will hence reduce our carbon footprint, which is so important. And it will make a positive impact on our world. So what is the future of camera operating and filmmaking? Well, this future is virtual. This future is real. This future is a combination of the best of both worlds. But I just showed you today. This future is already there. It's only up to you to make it happen. Thank you very much.